Okay, I think I have sufficiently stalled. It is now time to dive into Final Fantasy VI, which is the game that we're playing right now. Oh my god, just like booting up and hearing Searching for Friends is just like instantly like, yeah. Oh, I did start with a save state. Oh, blue glass, thank you. Open state. <laughs> I totally would not have remembered that on my own. I knew that we were in the Phoenix Caves, but it didn't occur to me that we were in the Phoenix Caves, if that makes sense. Like, what that means. God, this is such a good song. Is this the same... Like, do the walls of this cave look the same as other caves? Because these ones seem to be more lit from below. Oops, wrong button. Oh, I do need to heal, don't I? I swear, I'm a responsible grown-up. I can be trusted to <laughs> take care of my characters. God, I love this music. I love this game. God, I've got so much health. Oh yeah, no, the Phoenix Cave is... So the problem with me and the Phoenix Cave, Ken, is that in, in addition to the challenges of the Phoenix Cave being the Phoenix Cave, also, I have a phobia of both fire and caves. I'm probably gonna... I'm also probably gonna not be able to figure this cave out. Bum, 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 bum. Where there's more glow on the walls. Mm. You notice how clever it is, Trickster, but it's spelled with an X. This tricks are for kids. Chrono, thank you for uh, subscribing. Hold on. No, I did it wrong. I can play Searching for Friends on flute. In fact, that's one of the ones that I was putting together for my flute choir. Uh, Airblade? That's not the one I wanted. I mean, don't get me wrong, Airblade's just fine, but... <laughs> Blue Glass, I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Sorry, I missed chat because... Hello, EPW. By the way, we had somebody new that I didn't say hello to by name. Uh, Innovatious. I don't think I said hello to you by name. Anyway, hello. Hello and hello and hello. Welcome to the stream. It's going all right. Despite not being a fan Full clockwise from left. Okay. Uh, you guys ready to fall in some lava? Because we're gonna fall in some lava. You wait and see. Full clockwise from left. Okay. What was I doing in Dark Souls in that quote? I don't understand. That one looks like garlic. Doesn't that one look like garlic? Hi, Avenge the Sorrow. Let's see. Oh, wow. That did a lot of damage. Although, that's not necessarily what I want right now. So many magic points down here though. And levels. Oh EPW, thank you. I really enjoyed playing that game. And I, you know, people tell me whether they think I should play Final Fantasy X-2. And people are really conflicted on whether they do or not. Um
Here I am trying to... I'm, I'm clearly getting the twins confused over here. Because I was trying to bum rush as uh, Edgar. So we'll be using Airblade most of the time here. I did this right, I bet I didn't. Oh, I did! What? I'm so proud of myself. Alright, so we're gonna wander around Lost. A lot. Wing Edge. That sounds somewhat useful. Oh no, it's a maze. <sighs> oh, I want to give that to Locke, but he's not in my party right now. Locke, get in my party, buddy! Ugh. It's okay. Goodness, that did a lot of damage. That was some gravity magic, so that would have been, what, three quarters of my health? That is very convenient of them, Chrono. Okay, so clearly I don't know where I'm going in here. I'm happy to report that my Final Fantasy VI fanfic is over 13,000 words now. Um, but instead of writing last night, I took one. I took a look at the major plot events that I still have to cover. And tried to fix them because, like, for example, there's a lot of weird back and forth stuff that I don't know that I'm entirely sold on doing exactly as they are, as it is in the game. Like, uh... The... There was a switch back there? Oh, okay. I didn't see it. <laughs> Grano. I was really confused. I thought you were saying there was, like, a switch, like, behind me. Like, I was gonna, like, look on the... Look at the, like... You, like, did a switch just appear in my bedroom? Did I forget to heal Savage? Oh, I did forget to heal Savage and Edgar. Well, look, I pay lots of attention to the status of my characters in this game. This is a good song to play. Okay, so there's a switch. Where? Oh! Oh, hold on. That's where I came from. Okay, hold on. Does that mean... Oh! I swear to you, I've played a video game before. <laughs> I know. It may not seem so. But I promise it's true. Oh no, quarter. Oh no, he died! That's the worst! Those guys are butts. Bye bye. Oh no. Yeah, maybe healing, re refilling my magic would be a good idea. As I did. That's where the switch is. Well, now I know. And I will do some, I will do less random, awkward wandering. Here we go. Yeah, because I'm lacking MPs. Tragically. It's gonna make it hard. Why am I Setzer? Oh, 
Hey, Ampy. I'm hitting the wrong button. Map. That doesn't look like it's found. Why is Doom Gaze more likely to come now? No! Where am I going? This looks like a town. Oh, hold on. I need to bring my actual party members with me. <laughs> oh, innovations, innovations, thank you. I appreciate you uh, dropping by. That makes me feel good. You should probably get some sleep, though, yes, if it's after midnight, especially if you have to be out for work or school in the morning. Sorry, I can't not sing along with the music in this game. I just love it so much. Lift off. If by lift off, I do totally mean land. Yes, I hit the right button, guys. There's a there's an inn somewhere around here. There's an inn. It has the sign that says inn in the front of it. So once you have more characters, you get a higher encounter rate with Doom Gaze. Well, that's definitely not going to come bite me in the butt. That that's unthinkable. That would never happen. We're never going to fight Doom Gaze by accident when we least want to. Rage Stray Cat seems to be our source of code information about the specifics of Final Fantasy VI and how it works under the hood. Alright. Uh... <laughs> there we go! Whoo! See how this does. Holy crap! Cool! Can I run away? I'm trying. I'm trying to run away. Man, that was exciting! What? Well done. We gotta fix our damages. <laughs> Doomkeys didn't beat me. And that's really what matters, right? <laughs> I don't know where this is. No! I wanted a town as an in. Uh, you know, Deep Shock, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not. I want to get my boy back anyway. That's the belt. Oh shoot. Is this Doma? I bet that's Doma. You can't stay at an inn in Doma. Isn't that how you then do the, uh, the story? Did 
Don't you sleep in Doma and that's how that happens? Okay, that's what I thought. Hi, Blade Tiger. Good mattress for 150 GP. It's a good, it's a good selling feature, I think, in an inn. So, Squizzer, we've got one more week of Celeste. We're gonna <laughs> cheat heavily to get the final chapter, um, and also probably actually wrap up. Um, like, I do have some like wrap up thoughts I want to share about the game. Um, then we're gonna play Wander Song. And then there are so many options. So many options. For example, I have the, um, I now have the Talos Principle uh, DLC, which is very exciting. We've been talking about the possibility of mist, yes. Um, We'll see, Squizgar. There's a there's there's infinite jumps and invincibility, and that combination is pretty great. So we'll see how that goes. Oh no, Discipline Daddy! I'm sorry that he didn't. I talked a friend into getting it, and she's been playing it like crazy. And she like she beat it, and now she's like going through trying to get like all the strawberries. probably know where I'm going before I go. Just in case we do what we just did. But I don't, in fact, know where I'm going. Alright, are you guys ready for accidental doom gaze again? South Continent! Oh, and here I was thinking it was Northy. Mmm, here we go. It's the North Blob of the South. Got it. I was saying something and I've completely forgotten what it was. Alright, so then we're gonna choose it over here with Mognet. <laughs> I'm really glad I named him Mognet. That makes me really happy. Okay. Funkle Siltskin, that's such a good name. Cyan? Okay, so Cyan is a character I did not appreciate as a child. Um, and my sister really didn't like him. And so it made it hard for me to know exactly where I stood on that. Because um, I have a history of when um, someone that I... Uh, like, somebody who has a very strong opinion in my life shares that strong opinion. Sometimes it is hard for me not to uh, have my own opinions kind of overwritten. There is Squizgar. He's got the Moogle charm on. Which means that he won't run into any random encounters. Which is good. Oh, I guess they don't, do they, Blue Glass? I forgot that they're in the front row. Oh, I should probably heal Edgar. Man, everything does such a lot of damage. Okay, hold on. So I'm trying to have three or four different conversations in my brain. It's hard. Because I want... <sighs> Tara could do with what? Being in the front row? Oh, is that why she's doing no damage? I get it. Please don't die, Tara. I like you. Okay, so I wanted to talk about... <clears throat> oh, this doesn't sound good. Oh, it's these guys. 
we're gonna bum rush. Maybe I ought to bum rush with these guys. Well, with everything here. Okay, yeah, Terra does a little bit more damage. Ah! Ah! Is Sabin frozen? Is that what's happening? Oh my gosh, I should probably... Oh no, please don't kill him! You just killed him! That sucks. Why did you do that? Don't do that. Probably... I don't know, actually. you think it'd be like blow dart or something like that, but it's not. Oops, wrong button. Okay, item. Redacted cards? I do not know what you're talking about, sorry. Oh, I don't know. Um. Oh, heh. Ha! I see. Aha! run from these guys. No! It's the worst. It's the worst. It's the worst. No! Oh, come on, come on. I've concluded that this is the correct course of events. Because he can kill things in one hit that way. Oh my god, look at how many levels I'm getting. It's ridiculous. I don't use Mog. That's the thing. I like... My experience with this game is probably super disappointing for most people who like the game and actually pay attention to the mechanics. Because I'm like, I really do not care about... Right. Oh God, why is it always lava? Jeez. Why could all these, why are all these treasure chests empty? Gosh, this is like the thing that I remember. <laughs> because I have priorities in life. My priorities are Locke and Sully's. Yes, I may not remember or even have ever known exactly how to play the game, but I will ship my ship, thank you very much. <laughs> Watch me be doing everything here wrong. God, there's so many of you guys. Oh my god, why are you so bad? No. Why so bad? No! No, I hit the wrong one, no! Do I just run? Do I run? Do I run? I run. I'm just gonna run, this is too many dudes. What? Okay, hold on. No, Sabin! No, that's literally no! Oh, I'm gonna die. It's embarrassing. Phases are no run enemies. Okay, well, that's good to know. Don't you dare. No. Yeah, that's a spirit. 
Do I have to put don't cast stop on me on Sabin? Oh, that's not good. Okay. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah! We're doing this. <laughs> so let's run away from the party! <laughs> I'm sorry. I think this is really funny. We're probably gonna die. Oh, we might not die. Oh my god. <laughs> Solus is just like, whatever. <laughs> Peace out. I'm out of here, folks. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, wow, I have a lot of River Fives. Blade Tiger, I think you've correctly assessed the situation. Man. This place is tough or something, isn't it? And then I want to go down here. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Wow, this is a lot of these guys. You're a little far from the sea, friends. thinking about Shira recently because like I follow um what's her name on Twitter which is just delightful yes. yeah unfortunately I cannot have that many thoughts in my brain at any given time oh Squizgar that's a cool idea we watched Space Jam in French class as a learning aid. I feel like She-Ra is a better choice. Oops. Do I want that? Was that good? Did I do something dumb? I might have done something dumb, actually. I bet I did something dumb. Can I undo it? Okay, well, first we have to try not to die. Oh, it's these guys. We did okay with you. Man, somebody had asked me about Cyan or said something about Cyan, and here I am, not even remotely. I 
I don't do a magic. Not on that one. No, that's the same one that everyone else has been killing, friend. No. Spirit. Kill the one that's not the one the rest of us have been killing. Good job, Sabbath. Yes! Does Tara have a terrible weapon or is she just bad at hitting things? Just, I should see what she's equipped with. That might be helpful. Man. So does that mean that if you do the three character run, you're having one person in each party in Kafka's Tower? Oh, she's got the man eater. We don't want her to have the man eater, I think. Does she not? Are there no better weapons for her? See how this does. I seem to recall there's a reason why we don't want to use the man eater. Okay, well. <laughs> Thank you, Chrono. Oh, I guess Mog should actually do something, huh? Man, oh man. Does it do magic point damage? Oh, it does, doesn't it? Okay, well, we won't be using that then. I need to get her a new sword. Also, I need to heal my party. Wow, when did that happen? Hello, I'm Lauren. I'm good at video games. I know you can tell how good I am at video games. Occasionally deletes enemies, huh? Don't delete the heroes. that <laughs> oh my goodness that's amazing how delightfully random all right let's try not to die <laughs> okay we're gonna equip Tara with something else that isn't that so why don't I want her to have the man eaters there a reason I don't remember you can walk through them. You could walk through them. You just take damage. Meh. Do you know? Uh, how do I do this? Do you even have? No. No, you don't. Everybody needs to have the ability to cure themselves. Hopefully Mog won't fight. Hopefully Mog won't die. I bet I missed something by not going that way. Maybe. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Man.
is this the wrong way? It's the wrong way, isn't it? I don't know my way around here. But just think of all the levels I'm gonna have. Spirit. Whoa! No, that's not what I want. Okay, Tara, we're gonna put the man eater back on you. Oh, that actually that's actually interesting, Squizgar, because Scintilla I assume would be sparkly, which is like glimmer. No! Equip. Equip. Terra. Back to the main e man eater. Do I need healing? No. that treasure chest. <laughs> okay, whatever. I don't even care. That was worth it. I got a good laugh. guys. No. Did you say runic works against them? I mean, she also does the most damage of anyone in my party, but... Oh, is it blue magic? Or we could just kill them really fast. Good job, Savin! That's my boy. Actually, it's not my boy. He wants my boy. Eh? Oh, I can't go in there. There's water. Can I drop the water onto the lava and make it not lava? I don't like lava. No! find my way through this. No! No! It's a lot of me saying no in here, isn't there? Alright, Savin. Can we insta-kill it? Yes, we can. The best. 
I feel like it's it's good. Like the three that I can do are Fire Dance, Air Blade, and Bum Rush with some regularity, reliability. Okay, so I think that means it's time to change out Sully's Sully's. She's got Starlet. Um, is there anything else left to learn that's worth learning? I think she might have almost everything. Yeah, the only ones that she has left to learn are ones that don't seem especially useful to me. You know? Like, maybe we ought to give her... Is strength more... Big, bigger damager? Is strength more I hit with my fist? To your face? Or, excuse me, strength. Is strength... Bismarck. got one that's not even giving him anything. Eh. Not like you really need more magic. More HPs? More stamina? Magic power. That's what I want, right? Are there any magic power times two? No, I think we're gonna give you stray. Hey, Analia! Okay, and Shiva. Oh. That looks like that might be useful. Maybe? this go oh right but we just ran over that because okay ah uh, hold on yeah so we're playing final fantasy 6 tonight and i am yes that's exactly what i wanted you to do my friend good job sabin he just it just shook its zombie stick at him and he said no. That's the spirit, Sabin. Sabin, are you the official MVP of the party? Oh, hold on. I should probably un-zombie Edgar. I think when he's a zombie, I don't control him. Uh No! Edgar, how could you? Fifty of revivifies, huh? to do. Got it. Got it. <sighs> oh man, guys. This would be so annoying if you could actually have random encounters, but I don't have random encounters because I'm playing as a Moogle with a Moogle charm. Empty! What? Unthinkable! But how? How could this be? Oh. 
Look at that! They totally did that in Secret of Mana also. Let's see, we're gonna go through here. Figure out what's over here. Oh, actually, no, we'll wanna let him go, won't we? Okay. Hold on. Uh. I really wanna carry on a conversation here, but this is just, this place is just hard enough that like, I can't, you know? No, you set me on fire. I didn't want you to do that. Why did you do that? Don't do that. No! At least you wind up with basically an infinite supply of MPs. So I'm thinking I should actually bring some of my other party members here to level up at some point. Oh shoot! Is that treasure chest worth trying to get? Doesn't look like it. No, no it's not because it'll go up the stairs. Nope. Nope. And again, nope. What did that do? Why is... Why? Don't kill me, don't kill me. Please don't kill me, you're gonna try to kill me. I don't want you to kill me. No! Unacceptable! Okay. That's really not the one that I would've liked to be in stuff, but that's fine. No! Oh no! <sighs> okay. This is not good. Guys, we're having some trouble here. No! No, no, no. Well, it's okay. Somebody will survive. Whew! It's close, though. Yes! Yes! Okay, good. Alright. Yes! Yes! Don't kill Edgar. You killed Edgar. That's alright. I forgive you. Uh. No! I should probably have done some damage with her, but whatever. Okay, and then you're gonna cure him. Oh, uh, Sabin needs cures too, but don't set me on fire. All right, Sabin. This time for real, buddy. No, don't you shake your zombie stick at me. No, Sabin! I don't know why I did that, but I did it. No! Okay. I gotta admit, I thought that might have been the end for our party, for our band of intrepid adventures. But we pulled through in the end! Good job, team. Good job. <laughs> Okay. 
want to keep going this way and not do what that was. Oh, is the ground gonna hurt me now, though? Uh... Um, maybe the reason why you have an infinite supply of magic is because you're supposed to be using it for things that aren't just healing. damages. That's it, Sabin. Go after the same ones the entire rest of the party has been going after. That's the spirit, friend. You can do it. You can be incredibly useful. Chaos Dragon? I don't remember what Chaos Dragon is. So one of the eight dragons? The enemy that does nothing? I should probably heal. Has my strategy of ignoring attack magic finally reached an end? this be? Is such a thing allowed? Woo! Oh! They forgot to turn on one of the bad guys. Oh, that's funny. Good job, this game. I love this game. No! Lauren! And you were just talking about how you could do this, and then you didn't. God, the face line is so good in this song. Oh good, he went for one that wasn't the one the rest of the team was taking out. I'm so proud of you, my friend. them. Oh good, some levels, some magics, some I don't even know if I'm going the right way-ness. This looks Aha! Hello, friend. Oh, we did it! I don't even remember what we do from here, but I assume I want to stand on the thing. So I'm going to heal up just in case there's an attack that I don't remember. Alright. I assume that I'm going to go find a save point and use the primary party to take it out. Take out the bad guy, not the save point. <laughs> no, don't you dare! Don't you dare! No! No! You're bad, and we're gonna stop you from being bad, okay? Whoa, that did lots of damage! Way to go! Okay, so they dummy right when they die every time. Okay, that's good to know. Oh, 
Alright, oh no, it's El Nino. <laughs> that would have been very, uh... Timely. Oh man, okay, hold on, I gotta heal my party. <sighs> oh my god, Chrono. <laughs> All right. Um. Oh man. Somebody just got to the nihilistic cuckoo guy and uh in my um, archive of that game and left me a really adorable message about it. If you ever like, does Lauren read my YouTube comments? I read, I read every single YouTube comment. I don't reply to them all anymore because my brain isn't working as well as it used to, but I'll usually get around to replying to most of them. So if you leave me a YouTube comment, I will read it and appreciate it. Unless you're one of the people who says, like, really rude things that happens occasionally, and I won't lie, I don't appreciate the rude things. <laughs> They're not my favorite. Don't you do my party? Go away! Nobody likes you, buddy! So is there a certain degree of overkill that you have to do on those guys before they won't retaliate with big bad nasties? Oh, looks like there's a save point. Oh! Did I do wrong? It's my boy! I wrote this scene and it's so much more dramatic in my fanfic. <laughs> And a thing attacks and Sully's like jumps across to save him and she like defends it. Like she like runics um, or something like some creature who's about to breathe fire on him or something. It's very dramatic. <laughs> it's one of the first scenes I wrote. <laughs> because I was like, I really want to write the Phoenix Cave scene. So I did. This is why I'm saying, like, I, I take it some creative liberties. Look at him, he's my favorite! Oh man, uh. Okay, I love Locke, and it comes through in my fanfic because there's a lot of holes in the characterization. Hi, we're gonna talk now. You just watched me play, like, an extensive, like, somewhat difficult section of game with, like, almost no talking, where I would, like, start trying to say something and then get distracted by how hard things were and then try to say it again and then get distracted and then try to say it and get distracted. <laughs> now, one of the fun things about working on fanfic or something that I know as well as this game, which you might not believe that I know this game well, given how wonderfully I perform <laughs> <laughs> combat. Although, hey, we had some good dramatic moments there, didn't we? It's very fun. You can't plot that sort of stuff. It just happens. Um, no, but so I know the characters really well, and I have really strong opinions, and there are some things that you have to read between the lines on, because it's an older game where the, the expectations of, of what and how you, like, the, the writing is written to a different level, if that makes sense. Um, which is to say, like, they don't have as much room, and also the expectations are a little lower. Um, but, so some of the things that I think are really interesting, Locke and Sully are my favorite characters. Spoiler. <laughs> I like them. Um, no, so, so I love them, and they have a lot of complexity, um, but I think that that sort of thing gets overlooked because you do have to, like, read between the lines sometimes. Um, like... What you know about Locke and his place in The Returners is that he's a go-between of some sort for Edgar, Figaro, and The Returners. And you know that when he's sent to South Figaro, it's to spy on the Empire, figure out what they're doing. Um, and you see him sneaking around, talking to people, 
um, like plying people with alcohol to get them to give information. He clearly knows his way around and knows how to sneak through the hidden passageways. So like, it's clear Locke is a spy slash information gatherer who um, his job is to slip in and out of places and get information from people, learn about what's going on. Um, and presumably like he has to like learn the way around things. I mean, he's got this, he's got this history of being a treasure hunter, which implies, um, gathering rumors and information about where things are located, maybe tracking down old maps and things like that. Um, which seems like a skill set that one could apply to information gathering um, and sneaking around towns and things like that. Um, so my interpretation of Locke, because I have so many words, I can put as many words as I want on the page and nobody can tell me no! It's so exciting! Um, well, cider can mean something alcoholic in the U.S. too, but we have to specify hard cider. Um, oh, hey, I've got water. Speaking of. Anyway, so my interpretation of, uh, of Locke and his role in, in the Returners is that he goes around and like gathers uh, information, meets with people, talks to people, befriends people, finds things out. So he's so, like kind of like his job is to know things. Um, and I think that that's not a question that's answered in the game um, exactly. But there's hints there, so it's not like I'm breaking the character. <laughs> it's not like I'm breaking the story by interpreting things that way. Um, and I also think of him as being a very, like, kind, gentle soul who wants to take care of people and is very earnest. Because he's not actually the smirking, sarcastic, snarky, sassy, bantery guy um, that people think he's going to be. Um, as I've said before, that's kind of Edgar and Setzer. That is not the role that... Uh, that Locke plays. Locke has always been, he's always seemed very, very earnest. He's kind of the everyman in some ways, but he does have occasional snappy one-liners. Um, like I was trying to explain his flavor of snappy one-liner and it's more like um, the guy in Die Hard who's kind of, I mean, obviously he's extraordinary, but he's also kind of an everyman type character who has the occasional really, really, really snappy lines and sometimes sasses and banters a bit, but he's not, uh, he's not that, he's not the playful, dashing, charming rogue. Um, and I love playful, dashing, charming rogues. Um, but my my Locke isn't because I don't think Locke is. It's not in the game for him to be that way. Um, oh my god, I had so much fun writing the opera scene. <laughs> I try to avoid using uh, adverbs to describe dialogue, like how people talk. But he, he does have uh, that ribbon suits you, he said stupidly. Because <laughs> he's like, oh no. Oh no. Which is clearly what his... Um... Well, no, but see, I'm not saying that he is like John McClane. But I think, and I don't, know that, I don't know if I would say that he would say that. But I think that his style of humor as like the, the everyman with the occasional snarky one-liner is a closer approximation for the, the role that the character plays in the story of the game. Um, well, just like like my take on Celis is that she doesn't really have much in the way of self-preservation, does not think very highly of herself, um, and will just repeatedly throw her life on the line without really any regard for her own safety to try to do what she thinks is the right thing, um, which is what Locke sees in her. 
<laughs> and she sees in him just the gentle, kind soul who finds who finds kindness and compassion in his heart even for her. I just love it so much. I just love them so much. It's just so ridiculous how much I like these characters, okay? I have a problem. I haven't yet solved how I make... Like, okay, so I took Ultros out of the story and replaced him with, uh... Which, actually, I'm gonna dig more into, like, class issues between Zozo and Jador. Um... But, uh, so, so there's somebody who's sabotaging the opera because of that, rather than a giant purple talking octopus floating in the rafters, which doesn't suit the way that I write stories at all. Um, no offense, Ultras, but you don't have any room in my serious story. The octopus is a metaphor. Yeah, well, so I don't know that I necessarily consciously thought of Sully's that way entirely growing up, but playing through this game, this playthrough, I've really been struck by Sully's, um noble heart and her pessimism. Uh, like, I was writing... Do you guys mind? I'm just talking about this. I'm like talking about my fanfic, but I haven't been able to write in two and a half years and I'm really excited to be back on it. <laughs> and I've had so much fun working on this. I'll be like in bed and next thing I know it's three in the morning. Um, so this will give you kind of an idea of like the exchange and okay, whatever. Whatever. Alright. We're doing it. We're doing it. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> oh my god. I could read you the scene that happens here. Um, but I think I might read a different scene. Maybe. I don't know. I will have you know that the working title of this draft is the Spirit Pure as Snow. I don't know if I'm going to keep that because that was originally when I thought it was just going to be a couple of small vignettes solely from Sully's perspective. Hi, Stolen Light! <laughs> oh. Right, no, that's fair, Chrono. I was thinking about that. Hi, Candle! Many legends are based on facts. So this is this is my boy having re like found out about this and then proceeded to spend an extended period of his life investigating to then find it. Cause he's like, I heard a rumor, and I thought it might be based on something, so I went looking for it. And then see like Sully's like knows and cares, and she understands, but also she hurts. And I, um, yeah. Oh man, okay. Oh, I had fun writing. Oh, I forgot that it had like a dramatic like title screen to tell you, or title card. Locke is unfair. Well, that's one of the things that I liked um, about Locke and Sully's um, looking back on it is that um, they are both way too hard on themselves. So why is he patriarch? He wasn't called patriarch earlier, was he? So, by the way, have you seen my my band's logo? Honestly, like, the reading wouldn't actually fit at all with, uh, 
Forever Rachel, the section that I was going to read, because it, it's actually not. I wasn't going to read that section. I was going to read a different section. Okay, Soul and Light. Thank you. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I feel like Locke is very much a caretaker. Like, um, the way I have, um, the, the way that I have, um, I'm sorry, you're just, uh, this is just going to happen. This is what's, this is, this is what my Final Fantasy VI dreams have become is me being really excited about retelling the story. Um, no, but like, for example, like after Cyan shows up and he's like devastated and stuff is going on when they're in Narsh and Cyan is first introduced to the party and he's really sad about Doma. Um, at the end of that scene, Locke sits Cyan down and says, do you want to tell me about your wife? Because for me, that's the Locke thing to do is he's like, I know what loss is like. I know how much it hurts. I know that talking about the one that you've loved um, is one way of dealing with pain. So he sits down with him and says, tell me about your wife. Um, and to me, that like encapsulates the, 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 the gentle, caring, protective nature of Locke Cole and why I love him so much. Uh, like I actually thought, but I actually thought at one point about like, wouldn't it be fun if I gender swapped him? And then I was like, no, I really like the idea of having a tender, gentle, soft, sweet man. Because I think Locke is. I also think he's really physically weak and needs Sully's to defend him physically all the time. So that will show up repeatedly here. It's also a trope I really like. I like the really big, strong, physically powerful ladies who can pick up and carry their soft, sweet, sensitive lover and protect them from danger. This is a dynamic that I like in Final Fantasy VI. And this is a dynamic that it turns out I liked in Xena, <laughs> which is one of the only examples I've seen of my favorite character archetype as a female character. Um, but Xena and Gabrielle have that kind of a dynamic. <laughs> Apparently later Gabrielle becomes super tough and strong, but I didn't see that far. Yes, Candle, my fanfic is a novelization. <laughs> uh, yes, he is Stolen Light. Um, my ex-husband and I used to argue over whether Locke or Sensor was weaker <laughs> and worse. Because they're both, but they're both not good characters, but they're good characters, you know. Uh, there was um, so I haven't read a lot of the Transformers comic, um, but some of my friends several years ago were like, "Hey, uh, it's more than meets the eye. That's the one that's by the former fanfic writer, right?" Um. Yes, what's his name? Uh. See, like, Stolen Light, that was the argument my ex-husband made, which was that if Setzer gets really good specialty weapons that make him useful, and I'm like, look, if you have to wait until the end of the game when you get the best item for your character, for your character to be viable, I don't know if that counts. But we used to jokingly tease each other about that. Um, but yeah, so there was, a, there was a Transformers comic that was written by some guy who used to be a fanfic writer, and that kind of shows, not in a bad way, but there's just... A certain kind of tropiness and a certain kind of feel and a certain focus on shipping. Um, uh, but my friend was like, you have to, you have to read this particular run. Like, you're going to like this book. And there's the big guy and his, his little sassy boyfriend. And then his little sassy boyfriend, like, dies tragically and, like, he loses his memory or something. I don't know. It's melodrama and tragedy. And it's also the big, strong, serious dude who needs help with his emotions and his little sassy, loving, emotionally, like, better off boyfriend. Um, so if we talk about the big dude and his sassy boyfriend, his sassy little boyfriend, usually Transformers friends fans know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so if we have any of those in the chat... Please report back. Um, I want to say one of them might be Rewind. Is that a name? <laughs> but uh, but anyway, I read that comic and then like a year later, I had a dream that turned into the novel that I need to rewrite. And it had tragic robot voice and love, too. Um, <laughs> so, oh, man. Anyway, I'm a sucker for that kind of kind of pairing. Um Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, Deep Shock. I don't know that he necessarily pretends to be Han Solo. I would say he maybe has more in common with Indiana Jones, maybe? I don't know. Hi, Evil Hag. I do love Finn. Finn is very earnest 
I'm kind of an idiot. The thing is, Locke is not an idiot. Finn is kind of a, 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 a dumb child in some ways, which makes sense. He's young. Locke is not young. He's a grown up. And I find that very interesting. Um, but see, like, the thing with Han Solo for me is that he's like, Han talks a big talk about not caring about anybody or anything but money <laughs> and uh, begrudgingly goes along with things, insults potential friends, uh, hits on ladies. Um, whereas like our first encounter with Locke is that he's, he like kind of like sasses uh our Ar arvis or whatever his name is but then like like immediately we see him like oh i gotta go save this person and then he goes and he saves that person <laughs> and that's like literally everything Locke does pretty much is trying to help people and trying to save people so um yeah anyway I don't know. Should I read this thing? It feels kind of dumb now. I've, I've kind of lost the moment. But. Oh my god. There's so many words. There's just so many words. Okay. Well I was going to read. Just a little tiny itty bitty section. But like. Uh. Okay. All right. Here's a section that I feel like captures the dynamic of the characters um, and unlock and Sully's and like some of that. Um, I feel like at this point, I don't need to give any context about when and where this is um, because you guys obviously know a thing or two about Final Fantasy VI. Again, I will point out that this has not been edited. Not a single word of this has been revised or edited or anything. So there might be like the, th the same word like three times in two sentences. Please forgive me. Um, all right. Oh, gosh. All right. This is from Sully's perspective, but it bounces back and forth between Sully's perspective and Locke's perspective. Um, also, yes, I will be playing through the Suicoden games. I love them very much. Um, okay. Sully's had been excluded from any of the conversations with the Narshian governor, which came as no surprise to her. It was clear that most of the returners and all of the Narshians, I've made up a word, I needed it, uh, distrusted her. This was equally unsurprising. The sacking of Miranda still hung like a shadow over her, and her failure to save Doma felt just as damning. Twice over responsible for the deaths of thousands, how could she possibly expect her crimes to be overlooked? Locke emerged from one of these locked door meetings. <laughs> locked. Oh my god. This is what I mean. Um, looking tired, but he smiled reassuringly when he saw her in a, seated in a corner. I hate to impose, but if we find ourselves tangled up fighting Imperial troops, would you be willing to join us? You saved my life, she said, for however little that might be worth. I'm dead to the Empire, and I have no loyalty left to them. I'd rather not kill their conscripts, but if you need my blade, it's yours. Locke pressed his lips together. If they are conscripted, do you think we could get them to lay down their weapons and surrender? Unlikely. Their families back home are collateral. We could help with that, Locke was frowning, as though he were seriously considering this, as though the returners had not been flushed from their den like rabbits and scattered across the continent, as though he had both the manpower and the reach to protect the civilians living under imperial rule. What are you thinking, setting a bodyguard over every person with a family member forcefully conscripted into the imperial military? Something like that, he said, one corner of his mouth sliding up into a lopsided grin. It might sound outlandish, but you'd be surprised what people can accomplish if you give them a little hope. Hope isn't enough to win against the Empire. Is it not? His voice was gentle still, but there was something in it she had never heard from him before. It drew her eyes to his, and his gaze held hers, shifting, um, as unwavering as his words. She looked into their warm brown depths and felt the world shift in some barely perceptible way. Hope is the most powerful weapon we have. Someday I hope you'll see that. So... It's, it's the, it's the, is it not? That I'm like, that's the heart and soul of the thing right there. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, 
So that's my that's my take on the two of them. They both want to help people really badly. <laughs> um, and if you guys, if you want, if you want the the scene that we just did in the game, do you want it? Oh my god. Okay, hold on. I'm just gonna give you guys little snippets here. Oh man. Oh my god. Okay. Hold on. Do you want do you want some shipping? You want some shipping? Oh, I'm glad, Candle. It's supposed to. That's like a moment where I wrote it and I was like, ah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that's what I want. That's my characters. I love them so much. Okay. You, you guys want the okay, here's here's a here's a shipping moment. <laughs> you can laugh. Because this is unabashedly a shipping moment. And then we'll get to the scene that we just saw. I promise there's a lot of stuff that isn't shipping moments. I'm just reading the shipping moments to you. <laughs> there's there's a, there's a lot of them doing other things and having adventures. And I'm trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do about, like, the sealed gate and stuff. But it, you can have you can have canonical shipping because this is canonical shipping. <laughs> I love them so much. All right, so here is the opera leading up to the opera. You know this scene. You'll recognize this scene. I actually left a dialogue from the game. Only one line, but it's enough. Um, I feel ridiculous, she said. The same dismissive tone she had voice she had used earlier, but then her tone softened, and she added anxiously, "Do I look it? Is it all right? All right." The dress had been made for a bustier woman, so the corset was laced tighter to try to make up for it, with an oversized necklace drawing attention to the cleavage he had never quite noticed before. The voluminous skirt accented, accentuated her slender waist. Her hair had been swept back from her face and was bound up in some complicated way with a sky-blue ribbon, though delicate, delicate golden curls had escaped the binding and framed her face beautifully. He chose to focus on this ribbon. It was the easiest thing to focus on, really. For the first time, he saw her not as a fellow soldier and a peer, but as a woman. No, he realized with some embarrassment and a little horror. This was not the first time he saw her that way, but rather the first time he had no choice but to acknowledge it even to himself that he did. And that acknowledgement must be spreading to her as well as he felt heat rush to his face, which must be bright red by now. He turned away quickly. That ribbon suits you, he said stupidly. He found himself in the hallway without being entirely clear how he had gotten there. There had only been an urge, or there had, yeah, there had only been an urge to put as much distance between himself and Celeste's ribbon as he could. The look on her face as she turned to him for comfort and reassurance, a moment of rare vulnerability, and he had let her down, because seeing a pretty girl apparently made him lose his mind. A door inside of him had cracked open, and though he desperately tried with all his might to seal it up again, still the doorknob rattled like it might burst open again, and this time he would be unable to close it. Like a box sealed tight and banished to the forgotten attics of his mind, only to crack open just a hair, threatening to burst open again. And that couldn't happen. She was a pretty girl, though, and her steely exterior protected a heart that was willing to risk death to save others, a soul desperate to repent for any hurt it had caused others, a walking contradiction of violence and compassion, beauty and darkness, pain and love and shut up, he told himself out loud. <laughs> <laughs> with these two <laughs> and I, I didn't know what I was gonna write until I was writing it and it was just flowing out and I was like yeah 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 I'm kind of I'm kind of skirting a little bit with uh the ages because I'm in the real world really uncomfortable with an 18 year old and a 25 year old um But, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's like, I mean, she is really pretty and she's cool and she's got this beautiful soul and she just wants to help people. And she's, oh, God, <laughs> this won't do. Uh, and then um, do you guys want to hear the section that we just did? Oh, man, here she is with. Uh, so, like, Edgar and Setzer are, like, up on the airship and... Uh, okay, I have no idea exactly what builds up to it. Here's just a little tiny, tiny uh, thing uh, 
where uh, Edgar says, we can make this ship run with or without your help. <laughs> to which Setzer says, oh, I doubt that. You may be a king, my friend, but you can't just command an airship to listen. Airships are like women. You have to know how to talk to them. To which Edgar says, then I'm doubly qualified. <laughs> and Setzer says, is that so? And then Celis's observations about this. To her surprise, and maybe a little irritation, once the ice had been broken, the two men fell into an eager conversation about the inner workings of the ship. Because, let's be real, they totally would, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, oh, 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 I forgot I wrote the, the confrontation scene in the Magitech Research Facility. I have no idea how they get to the Magitech, Re Magitech Research Facility or what they're doing there. But I totally had that moment because I was like, I feel like shipping. I'm going to do that. K kind of chrono. <laughs> They're both the, like, super, 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 like, super straight men who might have the one dude who's the exception. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, oh, that's right. I, 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 I entered, I, I put Leo in, and then I wasn't quite sure what I was doing with that. <laughs> yeah. So there's just, like, like, see, so here it has, like, the end of something, and then, does Sully's convince the emperor of this, and then, floating continent in parentheses, and then pick up where the fic begins in parentheses, and then more like that, the star, star, star. And then one by one, her friends resurfaced, and then we have her and Sabin um, reconnecting. Um, she doesn't actually go into the burning building. She uses magic, and he runs into the burning building because it makes more sense. Um, yeah, I don't know if Edgar is entirely straight, but he super likes women, and Setzer likes women, but they can like each other too, and I did not know then I might accidentally ship the two of them <laughs> until I wrote that line. It was like, okay, boys. All right. <laughs> All right. Go have fun. You do that. Uh, oh man. Okay. This is, this is, this is a couple of different, a couple of different sections. Ah. She admitted to herself in the hidden corners of her mind that she was terribly, cruelly disappointed in some small way each time she came across rumors that, however truthful they may be, did not lead her to lock. Certainly she was grateful that her friends had survived and pleased to be in their company again, but still she found herself scanning every room, looking hopefully at every cafe or inn or marketplace for a sight of that familiar bandana, those disarmingly kind eyes. Um, yeah, he's not, hol he's not holding the building up in the story because it doesn't make sense for him to do that. So instead he's like leading, like he's like supporting the people in the town and like issuing commands for them to like try to fight the fire, um, which makes more sense. And um, then like part of like his plot struggle kind of is like, what is he going to do about his obligations as the, like one of like the crown princes of Figaro? And like, is he going to join Edgar? Is he going to continue to run from that responsibility or settle into a role as an authority? Um, which is, I think, an interesting direction for him that I want to explore. Um, but we'll see how I can do that without being inside either of the Figaro brothers' heads. <laughs> because I really want it to be from Locke and Sully's perspective. All right, you guys ready? You guys ready for more fanfic? <laughs> it's going to go up on YouTube. Oh, no. This is going to be, like, documented for, like, people. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. This is actually one of the first things I wrote. There's a bit of it. Okay. There, across a rickety wooden bridge, a smudge of blue against the red rocks, nearly purple in the blinding orange light, a breath of coolness and scorching heat. Locke. He had his back to them, bent over something, had not seen them, had not heard them come in, did not see the creature creeping up the side of the rock face toward him, stalking its prey, sharp teeth and sharp claws and sharp scales glinting, and he was so far away, farther than she could run before it reached him. Lock! she screamed, and her voice tore her throat. Her body moved on its own, legs pumping to propel her toward the bridge, arms extended, fingers already sizzling, buzzing as she pointed them toward the scaly beast. Electricity arced from her fingers, sharp, blinding white edged with blue, crackling, leaving a smell of ozone in its wake. Then a boom a moment later, and the creature recoiled. The afterimage of lightning was superimposed over the scene in front of her as she breached the bridge at last. She blinked and shook her head to clear her vision. Locke had turned, his hands at his waist, drawing his daggers in a moment, but the creature was already leaning over him again, tendrils of smoke drifting from its nostrils, light blooming between its teeth. Now we change. 
The mechanism was an old one, and clever, sapping all his concentration, but there had been a joy in that, forgetting everything about the world around him and slipping into a place where there was no room for thinking or feeling beyond the puzzle in his hands, forgetting the aches in his bones and in his heart. After all these years, the prize was here, at last. And then, impossibly, a voice calling him back, his name echoing off the, car the cavern walls. The ear-splitting crash of lightning and thunder, and a monstrous worm rising, rising up over him. He tugged his daggers from their sheaths, pitiful protection though they might be against a foe like this, with breath that could turn him to ash. A flash of metal, a guttural cry like a heart breaking. Stunned, Locke could only stare a moment, his heart leaping as she did. Could it be? Is that? Soaring across the bridge, an avenging angel, bright and shining and beautiful, her sword raised overhead to strike. The beast opened its mouth, and Locke raised his arm as if it might provide any protection at all. She landed between him at the beast. She landed between him and the beast, sword drawn. In a flash, she had raised it to the sky, and though fire roared from the creature's mouth, it parted around them. And then there's a uh, fighting that I didn't write. So we're going to skip to like after she defeats the monster and it's all good and we're fine. Um, because, uh, yeah, the thing is I do a lot of ice. Like there's a lot of ice and I liked the crash boom of it. Um, so, so there's lightning. I've, I've been having an interesting time trying to figure out how to deal with magic, but I'm working on it. I'm kind of pulling it off. This was early before I'd kind of figured out what I was going to do. Um, but, uh, okay, here we go. Here's a little bit of them. Uh, she clung to him, arms wrapped so tight he was half amazed that he could breathe. He held her more loosely, tentatively, hands gently stroking her back. It's okay, he said. It's okay. She felt like she was made of iron, every muscle in her body locked tight. She was like a statue in his arms. Her shoulders twitched involuntarily. For a moment, she softened, her face pressing into his shoulder and her body melting against his, a familiar intimacy that lit something deep within him. He could feel her breath on his neck. A sob tore out of her, one loud wail, and a harsh-voiced gasp for air. And he had never heard her cry before, never heard despair like this from her before. It sounded like the world was being torn in half again. And then, abruptly, it stopped. The portcullis snapped down, closing off the tears before they had even begun. She released him and stepped away. Her eyes were wet, and she tilted her face away from him. Once again she looked like marble, no softness in those pale cheeks, her face impassive, and her body taut as though she'd been chiseled into being. Sully's? He wanted to wipe the, wipe the tears from her face because she would not. He wanted to pull her to his chest again and feel her melt again, feel the tension release from her, and allow her one more moment of vulnerable humanity. I'm... You're alive. I am. And that's what I wrote. No, this is this is this is after they finished fighting. And and like the beast is gone and then she's like, Holy crap, you're still here and he's like, Yes, you know you can have feelings and that's okay, right? And she's like, No, no feelings. No feelings allowed. Um and then I've got a section with Rachel. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Rachel looked so young, her face soft, cheeks plump, forehead unlined. The past few years had aged him, had aged his companions, while Rachel had slept on unchanging. She looked like a girl, to suit the boy Locke had been, but now the years hung between them. You, Rachel said, lifting her eyes to the staircase. Sally stood there, frozen, her face a rigid mask. Had she been listening this whole time? But Rachel's voice was gentle, not a rebuke. Keep him safe, please. Sully nodded, swallowed, said in a soft voice, I will. And then she backed up the stairs and fled. You should go to her, Rachel told him. Rachel, it's all right. She ran her hands through his hair as she used to, and it was so very fami familiar and real and yet lost that he cried out. I love you, Locke, and I always will, and you will always love me. Always, he said through gritted teeth. I know, but it's time to let go. Those words. Did she have to say those words? And then I haven't finished writing that scene, but I will say after that scene is done, Setzer took one look at him and clapped him on the back. You, my friends, need a drink or several. Come, I know the medicine for that pain. <laughs> Thanks, Setzer, you're helping. <laughs> to be fair, Setzer knows all about drinking to forget the pain of your lost girlfriend. <sighs> anyway, yeah, that's, um, that's that. That's. 
that's the fanfic. That's some of the highlights. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> It's not that Sally's thinks that having a feeling is awful. It's that she doesn't think that she has any place in the world to have feelings. That's not, that's not what she's for. She's for fighting and killing things and being a monster who needs to be stopped and atoned for her last sins and stuff. Oh, Sal, hey. Hey, yes, hi to, hi to, to Brenneman. I just read chunks of my fanfic on the stream. <laughs> Hey, I spared you guys any of the stuff in South Figaro. And I haven't yet read the written the bridge scene in all book yet, but I'll get there. Uh. <laughs> anyway, that's this this Phoenix is what my, my band, the Returners, that's our our we have a logo. It's a Phoenix. I have occasionally, because it's patterned specifically off of this phoenix, and I've had people be like, wait, is that the phoenix Esper? And I'm like, why, oh, yes it is. We're friends now. century <laughs> loving this game. It turned 25 this year. <laughs> but like... <laughs> it made a really big impression on me. As you can probably tell. Uh... draw fan art of Rachel and I would know it was Rachel from Final Fantasy 6 and she doesn't we don't see a portrait of her ever but I know what she looks like like I don't know if I described her but I know what she looks like she has dark curls like and blue eyes like I know that about her melodramatic lyrics in the world to this song because again life priorities my OTP oh man have you it's on my YouTube channel but uh it's like the most dramatic thing ever that I wrote. It's in a different key, because I can't sing it this key. Death cannot break what once so strongly bound us and through this pain nothing's changed more verses 
but I don't remember them. But they're on YouTube. I'm wearing my, my, uh, oh, I'm wearing my lock costume, because I had a lock costume uh, that I totally wore to play shows with my bands, as band as leader of the Returners. <sighs> I think for a, for a child, this saying goodbye and moving on with life is a really it was it's a really interesting thing because it's a it's a complicated oh I should take this should I set your heart free line from here it's a good line <laughs> um but um. I need to remember that. <laughs> I haven't actually checked the script of the game. Well, no, they do. They do specifically go outright say that he's used his kooky herbs to save her, to preserve her. But I think it's really interesting, um, because as a kid, this is really, thanks, Untitled Goose Game, that really fits the mood. <laughs> I mean, like, as a, as a kid, you kind of want more, you know, the, the good guy wins against the bad guy, and then the heroes fall in love and kiss. Um, and things aren't usually complicated, you know? If there's a girlfriend in the past who's tragic, like she's gone, and that's just our tragic past, but it doesn't affect our present, if that makes sense. Um, but, uh, like, shades of gray don't just, like, I mean, obviously that's usually used to refer, to, to describe, um, like the morality of characters and things like that. Um, but in this case, like, this is actually a fairly complicated and adult problem to have, which doesn't necessarily make sense for kids. So this was kind of like, like an introduction of like, you can love somebody and then they die and you still love them. But also you can love someone else, and, and what is that like? And it's complicated, because Locke wants Rachel back, partly out of guilt. He wants to make that right, even as he's falling for Sully's, and he won't let himself do anything about that, um, because he still ha carries in his heart both the love for Rachel and the guilt, and he like won't let him, he won't let go, he won't move on. Um, but the healthy and correct thing to do is to accept loss, mourn it, grieve for the person you've lost, always treasure and love the person that you've lost, but then live in the life you have now with the people you have now and you can move on, you can find a, n a new happiness, you can find a new love, like, what? That's not how things work in stories, you know? In stories, the hero and the and the girl, because the hero is always a dude, the hero and the girl get together and live happily ever after. Having somebody have had a true love in the past, and then she dies, and he's still mourning and still grieving, that's not happily ever after. Um and I think that's really cool that they did that. Because just like thinking about other games at the time didn't really go there. And granted, again, like I said, this is a very grown up problem to have. Um, and I think that there's a lot of teenage main characters in a lot of games. Like, so not to, not to bash Chrono Trigger because I think Chrono Trigger is a really great game. But I don't think that Chrono Trigger is a great game because of the deep and complex characterization in it. Um, 
Yeah, and they're still in late. Apparently, it was supposed to end at the floating continent, and then they had time to keep going. And we're like, well, what if you lost and Kefka destroyed the world? Um, but yeah, like, as much as I love Chrono Trigger, it's not about, like, the depth and complexity of the characterization. Final Fantasy VI is excessively melodramatic and tragic. That's why I love it so much. Like, what came first, Lauren loving melodrama and tragedy? Or Lauren loving Final Fantasy VI. Did Final Fantasy VI cause me to love melodrama and tragedy? Or did it resonate with me at a very young age? Because I've always loved melodrama and tragedy. Who can say? I don't know. Um, but the characters in Final Fantasy VI have some complexity to their, their conflicts. Um, there's not a lot of cut and dry problems or cut and dry solutions. Um... And like even the the, the kids, um, like Gao's situation is, is good and interesting, and 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 let's let's all cry over that, both the tragedy and the way that Gao deals with it. I happen to find Realm and Strigo to be emotionally flat because they basically serve the purpose of comic relief. I want to just cut all the comic relief out of the game because I don't like comedy. I have no sense of humor. But you need comic relief to take a break from all the comedy, or from all the tragedy. Um, yeah, well, Final Fantasy IV feels a lot more like a fairy tale, so it has simpler characters, simpler conflicts, simpler solutions. Um, and that was really compelling and engaging when I was a kid, but it didn't stick with me the same way. And I don't want to, like, write essays about characterization in Final Fantasy IV, if that makes sense. Final Fantasy V. Oh my god. <laughs> Too much comic relief there for me. Um, but yeah, like, the characters in Final Fantasy IV feel like grown-ups in a story for children, if that makes sense. Um, so, like, it's interesting that, um, you know, Cecil and Rosa are grown-ups. Then they have a grown-up, they have a they have a secure adult relationship where like they're mature, they've been together for a while, like they're stable. Like it's just it's a grown-up relationship instead of like a new blushing teenager, like first love. Um and that's cool. Um but despite that, there's a simplicity of things. It's kind of like it's like baby's first introduction to the fact that, oh no, you have to deal with the fact that your king slash father figure has been taken over by badness, tragedy. Um, and so it's a, it's a good, it's a good game. Um, and it's, it's Luke, you are my father plot twist. Um, was revolutionary and amazing at the time. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it it kind of it feels like a bedtime story for children, um, and it's a very lovable bedtime story for children. Um, but I feel like it's not trying to have complexity and depth. And I honestly feel like whether you feel like it succeeded or not, obviously I feel like Final Fantasy VI has succeeded in a great many things. Not everything it tries. But Final Fantasy VI was an extremely, like, a remarkably ambitious game, story-wise, character-wise. Like, they took some big risks. Like, the comedy bits that I want to cut out and that I cut out of my version, like, they had to have those in there. They had to have comedy. They had, you know, they had to have the comic relief for children. Um, because they were making games that were going to be played by kids and some adults. Um, but they, they need that. It's just kind of like, um, how you can have, you know, Pixar or Disney movies that have more, more darkness to the story, but you still got your idiot animal sidekick to laugh at. Um, like that serves a purpose. Um, Final Fantasy VI probably more than any other game of its era. Terranigma has some complexity that I think um, is on par with this as far as complicated and adult situations. And I don't mean to say like a 
adult situations. Like, <laughs> but I mean, like, like, like grown-up stuff that you, you, you don't fully get as a kid. There's a maturity to it. And so, yes, yes, this game is maudlin. Yes, this game is so needlessly melodramatic. Like, Rachel loses her memory and then tragically dies later, so Locke gets to lose her twice. Why? I don't know. It's dumb. But I don't care because I love this game. Um, and there's things like that that are you're like, okay, guys, <laughs> chill out a little. Um, but like, Tara is one of the main characters. She has a satisfying ending. It's not that she smooches a boy. Like, and it's not that she wants to smooch a boy. She finds fulfillment in a parental role. What kids game or movie has that? Because that's a perfectly valid thing for a person to want out of life. It's a perfectly valid story decision. But who does that? Cyan is a dad who lost his family, a dad in your party. And his dadness is serious. You know, like, you don't see that stuff very much. Um, I think in a more juvenile story, the Figaro brothers would have had some sort of rivalry. But instead, you have the brother who steps up to take on responsibility because he sees that his other, that his twin brother wants freedom. So he makes that sacrifice. Like, as a kid, you don't even necessarily fully get that's what's happening, because it's not... Um... Like, it's not... Uh, something that can be easily reduced to a bedtime story, very easily. I feel like the characterization in this game couldn't be easily reduced to a bedtime story. Like, if I were to write fanfic of Final Fantasy 4, I would be really tempted to take it all out in the fairy tale direction because that's what it feels like to me. Um, and I think that's... I think it would hold up best that way. I don't think that, like, doing, like, a deep psychological breakdown of why Cecil is the way he is, like, some of that, sure. Um, but mostly it feels like it's fairy tale people and I would want to use a fairy tale voice. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a heroic bedtime story. Um... But, uh, I really love everything that they tried doing in Final Fantasy VI. And I will fight people like Brenneman who say that Chrono Trigger is better than Final Fantasy VI. I think that they are both trying to do very different things. And Chrono Trigger failed to capture me emotionally on any level as a kid. Like, I was like, oh, this is fun and interesting. Um, but I cried... I cried during Luca's backstory. Like, Luca's traveling in time with her mom. Which is one of my favorite moments in that game. And I really liked this, this stuff with Shala. And I don't think that any of the rest of Chrono Trigger at any point had any emotional resonance for me. Um, no, 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 there's something else. I swear there's something else gotta be something else. No. Sad robots. Yes, robo. Um. But, like, Chrono Trigger is, it's honestly a lot more of a lighthearted romp of a bunch of teenagers trying to save the world and having wacky hijinks. And sometimes some tragedy gets mixed in there and sometimes some drama gets mixed in there. Um. Yeah, I like, I like robo. Yeah, the Shala story in Chrono Trigger, everything with zeal, I mean, that's just the kind of story that I like. Like, what? Like, an abusive mother and her messed up children trying to make the best of their lives while sort of trying to excuse her behavior so that um, they can live with the life that they lead while also trying to save each other from it and also, like, the world is coming unraveled? Like, I eat that stuff up. <laughs> So that's the kind of story I like. Um, uh, 
<laughs> yes, I did like this Shadow Weaver plot quite a bit. Um. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of Lavos doesn't even know what it's doing. It's just hungry. Which, hey, we played, um, we played Mythic Ocean. Mythic Ocean has a Lavos-like creature who's clearly inspired by Lavos. I think we talked to the devs, and I think that he confirmed that. Um. Yeah. It's really cool that we can talk about stories like this. I, by and large, I even the games that I love the most, I don't generally feel that the characterization and story in them would stand up outside of a game. So I will say that a game's story is really powerful for a game. Final Fantasy VI made me feel so much, but part of that comes from the the multimedia nature of it and the interactivity of it. Um, as I am trying to turn Final Fantasy VI into a novel, I'm having, I mean a novel, it's gonna be a novella. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be 30,000 words and it's gonna cover most of the story of the game in one form or another. Uh, um, but uh, you have to fix it. There's like good bones, there's good potential, there's good characters. But it doesn't quite work. Like, if I were to put the story of Final Fantasy VI in front of someone who's never played a video game, they would not be impressed. And that's fine. Um, what makes Final Fantasy VI so powerful is we have this music, we have the beautiful art, we get to know the characters and feel connected to them over the course of the game because of the gameplay experience. Um, and all of that adds up to making a really powerful experience that's more powerful than any of the individual components take se taken separately. Um, so, uh, so like, um, brain. I lost my brain for a second. I really hope that if it turns out that I have hypothyroidism and I start taking medicine for it, it would be really nice for my brain to not just like stop periodically. And I'm like, wait, where am I? What was I saying? What's going on? Let's pick this back up. Um, but yeah, I feel like most games, even games with good stories, uh, if you told that story to somebody else, they would not be impressed if they didn't have the context of the game. Um, like, and in some cases that's fine, like, um, I mean, sometimes movies characterization, they take a lot of shortcuts because they have two and a half hours max to get you. Two and a half hours, an hour and a half? I don't know, how long are movies? I don't watch movies that much, <laughs> apparently. Um, uh, but they have to take shortcuts to get you to care about the characters in a short amount of time. Uh, so it's a different medium. And every piece of medium, I think, every media medium needs to be judged for what it is. Um, but I do think that video game stories are very seldom good stories across the board. I think that some of them could be. I think I'm gonna try to turn Final Fantasy VI into a better story taken separately, which means I'm having to fix some stuff. Um, but. That's part of why I'm so excited to introduce you guys to Sweet Good Into. Sweet Good Into has some dumb humor and some bad translation. <laughs> Can we talk about the cat that just goes honk? <laughs> it's amazing. That cat's my hero. Um, but, uh,. I think that Final Fantasy, I think that Suikoden 2 is one of the only games I've ever experienced where the story would be as good if I sat down and told you the story from start to finish um, and you'd never played a video game. You'd be like, oh, that's cool. Now, people will also then say, you know, games like these, like these largely linear narratives like why are they even games and like as I've said Final Fantasy 6 is like a million times more powerful because of the experience of the music and the art and the interactivity and the connection you have with the characters um, so it couldn't just be a book and even Suikoden 2 which has I think one of the only stories that could be 
It's loosely sort of, yeah, but, um... Yeah, there's a lot of translation errors, if I remember. Okay, so Suikoden 2 has a lot of text. A lot of text. And I'm pretty sure that it also had a really messy translation situation. I think it had one of those things where they were, um, they had a spreadsheet of things to translate. And I'm pretty sure the character of Joey's name is spelled four different ways over the course of the game. So we'll just count those when we play through that. Um, but the story is incredible. It is so good. It has all of the complexity and maturity that I want in a story. It defies its medium and the standards and expectations that people have. Um, so good. So good. So I really am looking forward to introducing that to those of you who have not encountered Suikoden yet. Um, oh my god, uh, is that the- there's the glitch where you push the door early on and then you can on the outer world map, you can like push this big thing and go in and I guess get Butch and Humphrey, I think? I'm trying to remember exactly what that is. Um, it's really, really good. Okay, yeah, my sister and I discovered that. The, uh, I think it was my sister and I discovered that. Maybe my ex and I discovered that. I don't know. I turned him onto the Suikoden series and he loved it a lot. He wound up running a tabletop game that was uh, a Suikoden game, which I still occasionally get mixed up with canon. So I might, and I'll talk about this when we play that game, but I might start talking about a thing and you're like, that didn't happen in any of the Suikoden games. I'll be like, oh, right. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the waiting at the gate scene is really, really, really good. Oh, we're gonna have to try to do everything right to get the good ending. There's only a few things, and I remember most of them. And yes, my friends, we are going to get the Tinto ending. My sister made me get the Tinto ending the first time through, and everything in me was screaming to stop. And she was like, no, you're going to go all the way through. It's really good. Um, yeah, people, people who do translating streams, or translators who have interesting... Uh, perspectives. I, I like learning that sort of thing. Like, I, I enjoy following Tomato um, and, and seeing what he has to say about things like that. Yeah, well, in subsequent... And don't spoil, because there's people here who have never um, never played a Suikoden, so we don't want to tell them what the Tinto ending is. But now, like, anytime I play a game that has a thing like that, I'm like, oh, it's a Tinto ending! <laughs> it's a defining experience. Um, yeah, they're so good. That's fair, Chrono. And Suikoden 1 isn't as good as Suikoden 2. Um, ah, but you sold it, now you can't get it back. Could I relate to any of the characters from the Suikoden games? <sighs> Probably. But I've played them over so many years that I'm really curious. If I return to the world of Suikoden 1 and 2 as a grown-up Lauren, you know, post-divorce, post-moving to another country, post all of that stuff, what character am I going to relate to? You know, um, Annabelle, Annabelle, is that the name I'm looking for? She's so cool. Um, but, uh, haha. <laughs> oh, Incidents, they are very good games. Sweet Good and 2 is fantastic all the way through. Sweet Good and 3 has a great story and questionable green gameplay decisions. It's weird. Suikoden 4 we don't talk about. Suikoden 5 is actually good. Oh, Kinnison was actually one of my favorites when I first played through the game. He was in my final party. I thought he was really cute with his doggy. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, this is quite a tangent off of Final Fantasy VI, but when we are done with Final Fantasy VI, we will go on to the Suikoden series, the first two. Um, and I will have many things to say about that. But we'll see how well my memory is doing by then. Um, I feel like $135 for Sweet Good and 2 is actually not a bad price. Ugh, I still have my original copies, but we will be emulating them for the stream. I love this line, today I set your heart free. Like, Ted Woolsey could do a good job when he 
wasn't working against the constraints of things and having to come up with some like wacky sideways way of expressing something in like five words. Yeah, this is this is a big part of Locke's problem is guilt. That's good, Chrono, because it's such a good line. And I know a lot of the lines that they kept were because they're like iconic Kefka sass and things like that. But I mean, this is so beautiful. I haven't yet solved how to not make him keeping her in suspended animation creepy. I know there's got to be a solution and I'm probably going to ask my Project Esper friends how we were talking about solving that because I think I'm too close to the source material <laughs> to be able to make that um... I hope that at some point we can share some parts of Project Esper with you guys. We did good work on that. Yeah, that would be possible, Chrono. Yeah, see, Sally says here. She's waiting. But... Yeah, so she could be kind of, kind of like in a coma type thing. That would make sense. We can do that. He's like, oh, wow, it turns out that if I can let go of the crushing weight of grief that's been crushing me for several years, I'll actually be okay. <sighs> it's canon! It's canon! It's canon! How could anyone possibly deny it? Does he only give you the ones for the treasure chest that you opened? I don't think we're Kefka. He's like, he's like a little sass. Yes, that's my boy. That's my boy. Best character. I love him. I love him. I love him. No. You just need hope and the power of love. <sighs> Who is in my party? Who is in this scene? Who does Locke have to talk to after this? Who does he look meaningfully into the eyes of after this scene? Huh? Huh? just saying I'm just saying you can choose not to like this canon and be wrong in your taste but it's canon and denying that means you're basically sticking your fingers in your ears and humming I'm not listening I'm not listening oh Locke you have no health Look at him. Look at how little help he has. Oh, oh Locke. That's okay. You're gonna be in my party forever and ever, so you'll have a chance to catch up. Wait, why was I trying to get Cure 3 with, well, whatever. Oh, man. I don't even know what the ending does if you don't recruit Locke. Because I've never done that. <laughs> I know that probably comes as a huge surprise.
Lauren Shears, that's a cute name. I am also Lauren, and I also love this game very much. Wait, you're from Narsh. What are you doing over here? Ah! Oh, this is a hint! That's cool. Because you can tell immediately. So I have a lot of references to the people of Narsh and how they dress. Although now that I look at this guy walking around, the design is slightly different than I thought it was, but that's okay. I can work with it. All right. I love this game, guys. All right, so what do we do now? We go, shall we go get Tritok? Now we got my boy, everything else is good. So, my party of choice is actually, I don't know if we've got time to get Gogar tonight. We might do that next time. So my sister didn't like Tara, so I wound up getting in the habit of not having her in the party. Turns out I really love Tara, though. Oh, we should bring Mognet. Okay. Cool. We'll do it. I know, Chrono. I have to level some people up. I mean, we could just go back to the Phoenix Cave and, uh, and level people up there. Benji Club, and then... Party members. Yeah, Terra, Celis, and the Figaro Brothers is a good, like that's the that's the dream team. That's the best party in the game. However, my ship. <laughs> I don't want to give him. Experience egg will be useful for leveling up my party. Atlas, Armlet, and Genji Glove, that's not a bad choice, yes. I have not done Castle Doma yet. Underground area? Which underground area? Actually, we're gonna save. And then we're gonna take off because Doom Gaze might happen. Ah, no, that's the wrong button! Yes, we'll see if I can make more sense of the Odin story. Alright, so we're gonna go to Narsh. Where are you, Narsh? I think we're going to try to... I don't remember. Narsh. We know Narsh 
is up in the top area, isn't it? It's, it's one of these places. Let's see if we get doom gazed. Don't doom gaze me, doom gaze. I don't want you. It's in one of the mountain range areas, though. Yeah, I don't know that I'm gonna do the dino forest. At least not now. Is this it? This looks like it. I don't want to get doom gazed. Okay, and Serpent Trench is a good music. It's, yes, that's right. It's a good music. That's what I said. Did I get it right? Or is this just... Nope. Ah! Narsh, where are you? Oh man, can I do- I don't know that I can do the eight dragons yet. Like, I mean, I can do them, but I don't know that I can win against them, you know? Northern continent. There it is! I found it. We're gonna save here. Because I come in two stages. Either I always save or I never save. There's no... Yeah, I should probably get used to using magic from time to time. How are my stats? I'm doing alright. Man. I forgot it played this song here. Oh, this is the, this is the healing bucket, right? HP MP restored. Okay, so do I go through here? The weapon shop in the house in the top left. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to run into random encounters because Mog has the Moogle charm on. That's my boy. I mean, I wouldn't mind leveling here. I just realized I was like, wow, I'm not running into any encounters. I should probably level up my party though. Probably be a good idea. What should you equip my friend? What level are you? Oh, you're low level. Okay, we're gonna equip you with the uh, experience egg. That sounds good. Yeah, that's why I brought him. Yeah, I think I'll take the Esper. I mean, is there any reason not to? Seventy years, that's a long time. I mean, assume I want... I, I assume I want the stone. I assume I want the magicite. I think that's usually what I did. Even if the sword is cool. Oh, should I make the sword? I'll let you guys decide this. All right. Vote now. Sword or Esper? Phone in and text sword or Esper to your chat now. And yeah, I wondered about that stolen light. Is 
It is true, I, I generally mash things with swords. I don't usually mash things with magic, although it looks like I might have to start at some point. You can just get, you can limp by, okay, without hitting things with magic. <laughs> That's fair, Carl. Oh man! <laughs> That's fair, Rampy. That's fair. Okay. It feels weird to make a sword out of... out of an Esper. It looks like we have more votes for Esper here. We've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's do it. I feel like overwhelmingly people have said Asper and, or I guess Magicite. And I'm supposed to be using magic anyway. So. Right. Cool. Thank you, sir. Ooh. I mean, she's really good, though, with her sword. So maybe she's not the person who should have it. Maybe I should give it to Sabin. Well, no, but he does lots of damage. I guess I'll put it on Sully's. Tintinibar? I have one of those, I think. I might not. I don't remember. We got an experience egg. I'm gonna go with Sully's. Economizer. What does the Tintin bar do? The gold hairpin halves the amount, right? <laughs> nasty talk, because it's a nasty talk, but it's nasty. That's very funny. Ah, okay. That's the spirit. Oh, I should probably equip Mog, yeah. <laughs> He's good. He freaks? Okay. Mastered a new dance. Cool. Okay, let's equip Mog. I don't think he's wearing anything. <laughs> oh no, he is! Okay, well, he's doing more better now. Okay, so you were saying that I should give him some firepower. I wanted him to be able to heal. Let's get Cure 1, and then we're gonna do that. Okay? Like, it'll just take a couple of encounters. I just, I like having everybody, oh, Mog's not in the back row, okay. I like having everybody in my party be able to heal. That's a certain versatility that I find very useful. Thanks, Locke. You're the best. My friend Locke. Is there something in all of these rooms? I don't remember. Or if it's just like only certain ones. Yeah, like it'll take like four fights for Mog to get that. No! What are you 
doing? Oh. Is Tritog rainbowing? Do I want the staircase on the left? Oh, okay. Man, these poor people in Narsh, they're getting, they like locked their doors so that people wouldn't come in and raid their house. And then, oh, hey. All right, so we're just gonna go do that on Solitary Island. I'm glad that the stuff that you get isn't from pillaging people's houses. It's be given to you by people. It's a good touch. No! Oh no, wow. Magnet! See if I can do this. Nope, I can't. Why is he failing so much? What am I doing wrong? There we go, Magnet learned cure. Now we're gonna get him fire. <laughs> because I didn't give him another boomerang, but I, I should. Be free, there you are. So I assume I want fire too. And not fire one, right? <laughs> That's a cute deep shot. I'm taking a look at what I've got here. I don't have anything that... Be Freed is the best choice for learning fire too, right? Yeah. Because this is times five and this is times three. Okay. Got it. We're good. Did I go here already? Ah, the elder's house. So he's the elder, that's what they call him. Why can't I read his diary? I can like read everyone else's diary. He use like a secret code. Yes, yeah, somebody's got Phoenix. It's gonna take a while though. I don't know that we're gonna get that in time. To get better at thumb rushing. Hmm. Part of me wants to just like hop back over to the Phoenix Cave because I get so much more magic experience there and I do need to level up my party a bit, you know? Ah! My spell check does not like Miranda, the name of the place. Cave to the north. Because it thinks that it should be Miranda, the, the name, not Miranda, the place. Yeah, but see, like, the beauty of the Phoenix Cave is that you level magic points and level levels. Did we do that? Ooh, 10, that's a lot. 
Should I do that before coming here? I might as well, right? I mean, it's not like I'm gonna be like, gosh darn, it sucks that my people have levels, right? Where is the Miranda Desert? Fantasy 8. Oh, cactars? Oh, I don't like those. Where is Miranda located? Actually, we're gonna save just in case. Uh, Doom Gaze. I have a healthy fear of Doom Gaze now. But it is nice that, like, like, that's why I did, like, I was like, I'll do, like, a thousand damage. Oh, it's still the southern continent. Okay. Spell grinding in the room where you get the air anchor? I don't know what that means. Is it done? Okay. Well. Where is Miranda? Over on the peninsula near, near Jador. Okay. So in the like normal world, Jador is over here. Is this it? I should float everybody. Oh, Tower of Fanatics, my goodness. Who has? Somebody has float. I think, maybe. Somebody might have float. Somebody might not. Oh, she probably does. She does. A cactar building up something that doesn't sound good. Oh, I forgot that he changes the the location that you're in. Do I have to cast magic on them? Ah. No! Alright. Let's see if we can... Oh, drill would see... Oh, okay, so those are things that, that bypass physical defense. Magnet learned fire. Cool. Uh, it's interesting that like the different areas, like I would something that I find really interesting about the um the game design here. Oh no, it's a zone eater. I don't want you, zone eater. <laughs> Lock agreed. <laughs> Ah, how you get a lot of money here. Um, I like that, um, because I can't think of a single other game. I can't think of a single other game that, like, where it's like, oh, there's the forest where there's a lot of, uh, dinosaurs for some reason. You know? Does this blow people away? No! Holy crap! It does a lot of damage! Holy crap! Okay, do I want to run away from it? Yeah, I do. 
Nope, that's it. Bye, party. Bye. We're all dead. Run. Ah, annihilated. Okay. Well, that's fine. I didn't realize quite how scary those guys were. Hey, string player gamer. I'm doing all right. Do I lose my money if I die in this or, or what? Did I just start from my last save? What did that do? No, okay. Oh! So I keep my experience. All right, cat drops. Oh, I should probably have ruined it. Oh no! So I guess I'm gonna take care of it. I didn't realize that you kept experience. That's really cool. I don't know that I ever knew that as a kid. Man. Silliness has so stolen light. So does that mean if I see a zone eater thingy that I should just not be in the fight? I should run away? Am I low level? Like, should I fight this guy? That's not good. Uh, well, that, that's fine. We're good. Everything's good. All good. Uh, so I just want to fight the cactars. That's what I'm doing here. Yes, but I can't use a tent. Or an inn. Shh. Okay, these guys- oh, I'm not in the desert, got it. Like, no. Go away. Bye, bad guy. Oh, I should probably be a log. Crawler, thanks for the raid. I don't know if I know Doom, because I think I might have just been like Doom. Master a new dance. Oh, does she? Keep her alive long enough for that. Yes, somehow miraculously I managed to remove those poison. I'm really good at staying focused, okay? Okay, Cactrot. All right, Sullies. You're gonna ruin it, just in case. In song. Ooh, look at that. Oh, because everyone else died. That's why. Oh, 
I should probably make the rest of the party flute. What can I find that I, like, are there, like, giants here? Here we go. Here's Bum Rush. <laughs> Alright, let us go back to float, apparently. Well, I don't know why I need to float, but I do. That's right, Kenny, we are grinding magic points because we're gonna go get Tritok. And I wanted to bring Mog with me. Kenny, can I just say I'm really amused that you see this and you're like, oh, well the reason why someone would go to that desert would be to grind magic points, so that must be what Lauren is doing. Mog is done with if you can already? What? Are you serious? <sighs> okay. What else do I give him? Oh man. Yeah, Locke's gonna be done with Phoenix soon. Well, that's cool. It's true, more cure spells. Yes, thank you, Lugas. You're correct. Starlet. Looks useful. Seraphim, also useful. Yeah, let's go ahead and knock those out. Yeah, I know, Kenny. That's, I could tell that you knew that from your old playthroughs. I think that's delightful. Yeah, Life 3 seems like it would be useful. Uh-oh. Okay. We run. We run, run, run. There we go. We got it. Okay. All right, Sabin. No, Sabin. Really, I should be saying, no, Lauren. No! Okay, so it turns out that Runic does not defend against that. I don't know if I have... Do I have x -Zone? I haven't really done a lot of... Man. Okay. Sully so says it. Okay. X zone. It's hmm. <laughs> funny. I appreciate that image, Moth Suit. So we're gonna change out our espers. This lock has now completely finished with Phoenix, correct? Oh no, he should probably get. Yeah. You've got everything there is to get right now. So one of these other frees up. You're doing all right over here on the Starlet front. Oh, cure three now. You don't need that. Let's give you 
It's usually like a fist mark. You know? Yeah, we're gonna do that. Sorry, I realize this is maybe not the most exciting thing. Skip to Madwin. Did my... Madwin? I was not... That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Sorry. Oh, my head just started hurting. That's no good. Probably just dehydration. Okay, hold on. We're gonna try this. I don't think it's gonna work. Okay, so X zone. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. That's good to know. Yeah, we're gonna shut down shortly. I did banish it to the Shadow Realm. I don't know, Candle. People told me that I should do that, so I did it. It should be dessert, Aria. I think that would be great, don't you? Oh, Hoover's no quake? Okay. Cheesecake. Cheesecake is delicious. Alright. Oh, you know I have some strawberries. I was going to make a strawberry tart in honor of Celeste. But I haven't done it yet. Alright, lock. My boy. How are we doing over here? with Phoenix. Nope. Do I want to hold out for life three? Oh my god, the concept of dessert. I do like dessert. No, no question there. I had ice cream. Do you know if you microwave like a spoonful of peanut butter and some honey for like 40 seconds and then you stir it and then you put it in for like another 20 seconds and then you put in some chocolate chips and stir that and then you, like, that'll be delicious on its own. Then you start, then you like spoon it on top of some ice cream. It's good. And no, I mean a strawberry tart because my my strawberry pie was a strawberry tart. I didn't have enough strawberries for a strawberry pie. Um, and I'm excited about strawberry tart because apparently strawberry tarts are very Canadian because Tim Hortons made them and they're a thing. So <laughs> I want to try that. I need life three. Okay. All right. Maybe if we get to the get life three and then move on. She called it a pie, but I know desserts, so I know better. Let's see if this works. Oh no, it didn't. No. God, this takes a lot of magic. Cross your fingers, is it gonna work? No, it's not! Okay. Might as well run away. Oh, I guess I can heal my party. Sure, but like, I only have so much MP. An X zone is really expensive, as it turns out. Oh man, you can cure the party. Yes, this works. Um. Alright, so we'll just save after every fight here, which feels like a good idea. Is this actually faster than leveling in a... Uh 
if I have Osmos. Do I have Os Osmos? You guys told me I should get it. Oh, I Bundling up something, not building up something, no. God, he's so many tears now. So impressed with him. I can usually get it. Just gotta make sure everybody has. No, why is this happening? Because I'm doing a bad job. I'm having a hard time with it. Why am I having such a hard time with it? I'm getting frustrated. Oh, interesting. Okay. I don't know why I'm really... I do just fine. Most of the time I can get bum rushed. I've been bum rushing a lot lately. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but apparently I'm doing it wrong. Okay, well. Oh no! That doesn't sound good. Run, run, run! Okay. Well, that happened. We survived. I guess I might as well go into the inn here. Which is right there. Yeah, I think we're gonna call it a night. A little bit, a little bit after ten. We've done a pretty good job of playing. <sighs> we're working on getting Mog. Like, yeah, he'll get the rest of those eventually. But in the meantime, he's got Fire Two. I think everybody's got fire, so. Poor Miranda has seen better days. All right. Yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to all that. Me just like rambling a whole bunch about Locke and Sully's and my, my serious fangirlness. <laughs> and for, for indulging me as I share the thing that has taken my creative energy for the past couple of weeks. I don't know if it's quite been a month, but I've been working on it for a few weeks now. I'm going to keep working at it. Question is, will I finish writing a draft of the fanfic before I finish replaying through the game or not? I don't know. We'll find out on the very next episode, maybe not, of Lauren Plays Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> yeah. This has been fun. Um, and again, as a reminder to everybody, um, we're going to do one last Celeste stream or we will attempt on Thursday. Saturday, I guess I'm going to do tarot again or something like that. And Sunday at 2 p.m., there will be a concert that I will be playing and there will be special guests. So you should come to that because there's going to be people making good music. And I will have more information on that 
tomorrow when I've hit more of my work deadlines and can focus on getting that ready. Thank you, Blue Glass. I'm doing all right. I'm at least better than I was when we closed last night. So thank you all so much for caring. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And if you're not already as part, part of our Discord, you should join our Discord um, and hang out with us there. And I also have a social media presence, so you can do that. Um, anyway, I will see you lovely folks later. If not later this week, then next week. But hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care. Stay safe. Stay inside. Wear your mask. Um, get some sleep and practice self-care. Bye!